Hey fellas, welcome back to the 132nd scale TA-183 Huckabian. I, I don't really know how to pronounce that. Uh, anyway, I've got it in primer. Here it is. It's kind of a neat little plane, kind of nerdy looking, but uh, I don't know, kind of neat. Reminds me of an early MIG. Anyway, I got it all put together in this exciting episode. I show you how I pin the tail fin on and how I locate, uh, mark my pin locations on uh, two separate pieces, the fuselage and the tail fin, how I go about doing that. Uh, I also show you how I fill in the gaps on the windscreen and basically just kind of explain how it all goes together. So uh, let's get on with the video. All right, as we can see, I made a lot of progress. Now the fuselage halves went together pretty good. As you saw in my last video, there it was a little warped. I did come along with a heat gun and slowly heat this side and kind of push them together and it made it just a little bit better. So then what I did is when I put the two fuselage halves together, I glued them with super glue and then I came along and this is before I had the, uh, the back deck on. I came in with some five minute epoxy and spread five minute epoxy throughout the inside. So that stiffened up that joint. Then I came along with uh, my CA glue and gunmetal pigment, right here. Yeah. And went along and filled in that seam. Now, from what I understand in the, the, the real thing, it was supposed to split apart much like uh, some of the other, um, like the, I think there was a MIG, the MIG-20 something did, it kind of splits in half so they can pull it out and then work on the engine or, or, or whatever. So what I did is I just moved that split right along just on the outside of where I, I uh, did my super glue and metallic pigment. And it may not be 100% accurate, but it's uh, pretty close and no one's gonna be able to tell the difference. So I took care of that. Then I put all my decking on. I had to pull out the seat because there was something was just a little off. So I pulled out the seat and I kind of made some adjustments because something was off and it wasn't quite straight. I think I got it pretty close now. So it was just a little, little fiddling, but I got it all in there. I uh, got the wings on and I didn't film that part because there was a lot of holding. I pinned it in two different spots. You can kind of see the remnants of where I marked where the pins were gonna go. Uh, so I got it pinned. I glued it down with my five minute epoxy and then with the seam, because there was a little bit of a seam when I adjusted it to get the wings at the, at the right angle. Uh, I took my super glue and uh, metallic pigment and went along and filled that in. So I've got a nice secure join. Now I had somebody ask me about how I find the location of my pins on two different pieces and that's what I'm gonna show right here. So I've got the tail fin and it's gonna go on right back here. And on top of that, we'll go the horizontal stabilizers, just like so. So I'm going to want to pin this because if I just glue it, then if I come along and hit it with, I'm not an engineer, but I think it's called shear force, maybe. But if I come along and hit the side, it's, it's most likely going to pop off. So in order to strengthen this, I'm going to insert two pins. Now, you can use copper tubing. I've used copper tubing. I've used brass tubing. Um, something that's going to be pretty solid but I've got these metal pins that I've that I didn't use from an old Tamiya kit and basically I'm gonna put one here and then one down here and how I put pin locations into here that match up to this one I'll show you how I do that so I'm gonna take some red paint and this takes a little bit of a little bit of practice to get it right but this is how I do it so now I'm gonna take my toothpick and I'm gonna come along here and just take a little bit and where I want the pin, I'm just gonna make a little dot. Now I'm gonna align my 
vertical tail fin. I'm gonna press it just like that. Now, if you sit there and move it around, you're not gonna get the right location. Uh, it just, like I said, it takes a little bit of a practice because you, you, you gotta put it on there just right and then immediately pull it off so you're not rubbing. Now I've got two corresponding locations in which to drill. Now, in order to make up for minor errors, you can drill them just slightly larger than the diameter of your pen. Uh, that way you can kind of move it around and adjust it if needed. And once I drill the holes, I'm gonna glue it with a five minute epoxy and that's gonna fill in any, any uh, wobble or, or any, any uh, blank spaces that the pen being slightly smaller than the hole, it will fill those in. And I'm not thinking real clearly. Now when I drill these in, I wanna drill at a 90 degree angle. And I wanna to try to keep it straight. And you can match both these parts up and draw a straight line so that the, the pin's even. But with, with this, I think I can probably judge it. Just kind of keep it perpendicular. And I will fast forward through the boring drilling part. But again, I'm trying to keep it at a 90 degree angle and as straight as I can. But if you're off a little bit, um, if you drill them just a little bit bigger than the diameter, it's gonna give you that little extra leeway so you can, it, it'll, it'll still fit in there and you can still kind of manipulate it. So I'm gonna finish drilling these and then we'll come back to uh, mating them up with each other. All right, now I've got my holes drilled and my pins inset into this surface. And as you can see, I also drilled a bunch of shallow holes and I think that's gonna give me just a little extra grip with the five minute epoxy. So these will mate up just like so. And it looks pretty good. Now I did drill this one just a little bit bigger because this the bottom pin was a little bit off. So with it being a little bit bigger, it fits just perfectly. Now I'll take some five minute epoxy and it doesn't take much. Let me get my, my tape out here. I'm just making a mess all over the place. Now you can use super glue, but because super glue is pretty brittle, and I think I mentioned this before, it does have a tendency to pop off or break apart because it is so brittle if you hit it real sharply. So we want to use five minute epoxy and I will be adding some CA glue and metallic pigment to fill in the seam as well. So that'll also give it a little extra added strength. And I think with the using the metallic pigment pigment with the CA glue also gives it a little less brittleness. It does kind of soften it up a little bit rather than just using straight super glue. So this is my five minute epoxy. I'm gonna come along here and I'm gonna I'm gonna do both sides and I'm not gonna smear the crap out of it. I'm just gonna delicately place it. I'm gonna put it around these pins so they can go nice in the holes. And just, I don't want it squeezing out very much. It's okay if it does squeeze out a little bit. You can even let it dry and then come back with some lacquer thinner and wipe it away. It takes a little bit of scrubbing, but it does work. So I'm just gonna put some in these little holes. And these little bitty holes don't really match up with anything on the other side. It just gives the five minute epoxy something to bite into other than the flat surface. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing with this side. And 
And like I've shown in my other videos, you can have some isopropyl alcohol hand, uh, handy with a rag soaked in IPA. And uh, you can wipe away some excess before it dries. So now I'm just going to fit this on here. And some of it is going to squirt out. So what I'm going to do, let's get rid of this. Get this out of the way before I start spilling CA glue everywhere. Take my isopropyl alcohol. Okay, and I'm going to hold it down. Yikes. And this is going to require me to hold this. But I'm going to try to wipe away some of this excess while I got this on here. Okay. Now I'm going to sit here and hold this tight until it dries. And then I'll come back and show you how I take care of that seam. So we'll be back in a minute. All right. Now this had a good time to, to dry the five minute epoxy, you can see there's a noticeable seam right along here. It's kind of, it's almost like the resin dips in, it's kind of rounded off. So I want to take care of that. And one way I do that, and if you've watched a lot of my other videos, you know this is my preferred method for tackling seam lines. I'll take some Zappagap CA glue, and you can use any CA glue, I just kind of got used to this stuff. Uh, in my opinion, it's a little softer than uh, say Bob Smith's Industries, it's a little bit harder to sand, uh, in my opinion, but you know, take that for what it is. And then I'll take some metallic pigment. And I've had a lot of people ask me, can you use any pigment? And I've tried other pigments and I have been unsuccessful. The only, the only uh, pigment that I've been able to use to mix with CA glue is metallic pigment and not all metallic pigment. I've got some other cheaper stuff up there that doesn't work. But uh, this Ammo MIG gunmetal seems to work quite nicely. So I will just take some of this and mix it in my CA glue. And this lets me see where the CA glue is going. You can just use straight CA. But it's sometimes kind of hard to tell because it's clear where it goes. And this also softens it up a little bit more. It makes it less brittle, in my opinion. <laughs> now, I haven't done any thorough tests, just in my experience. This seems to work well, so I use it. Okay, so I mix that up real well. And I've got my little glue looper here. Uh, one thing when you use this metallic pigment, it does kind of get everywhere and makes a mess. And you can see I dropped a little bit here. So a little isopropyl alcohol, clean that up, but it does kind of make a little bit of a mess. I'm going to go ahead and clean off my glue looper by lighting it with a lighter. Don't breathe the fumes. And then I will come along and I will try to do this on camera. Let's move my glue over. Yeah. So I will take a little bit of this glue and my glue looper, and I'm just going to start filling in this crevice. You can see how that capillary action just runs it down the seam. And I'm going to keep building this up until I fill it in, and then I can sand it. And then I will smooth this out to where it's all flush. You can also take your accelerator or kicker and just run it along the seam and then that will dry it. And I will just keep building it up and building it up. So this is not only gonna fill in the seam but it's also gonna reinforce it. Now I could come along here with putty and filled in with putty, but that doesn't really add any strength to the join. This does both. It fills it in and adds strength. And that's what I like about it. 
Now I'm gonna lose some detail when I go and sand this, but uh, that's gonna be easily remedied. I can come back after I do all my sanding and smoothing. I'll just come back and rescribe those. That's not that big of an issue. And you can see that kind of goes down that panel line right there. So uh, again, I'll just have to rescribe it, dig that out of there. And then And for me, that's a lot better than messing with all that putty and smearing it all over the place and making a big mess. You can be a little more accurate and get in there and work a little finer than what you can with putty. And like I said, it does strengthen the join, whereas putty wouldn't. So I'm going to keep doing that. I'll fill it in and I'll sand it all smooth. I'll come back and I'll pin the horizontal stabilizers up here. It's gonna be a little tricky because uh, there is gonna be a few more gaps. So I'm gonna have to line that up properly, take my time with it, get it pinned, do it just like I did this uh, tail fin here and uh, come back and fill it in with the CA glue. And then I should be ready to paint. Now I've already got the flaps here, the, the inside flaps all drilled and pinned and they're ready to glue on so uh, I'll do that right before I I, uh, I prime it. I've also got the windshield to put on and we'll come back and I'll show you that that's a real pain in the butt because it's that thin vacuum form clear plastic which is a nightmare. I've got it pretty close um, but I'm still gonna have to do a little bit of work on it so we'll come back and take a look at that once I get all this other stuff on. Okay, now time for the canopy. So what I've done is I've got this as close as I can possibly get it, <clears throat> but there's some gaps. And with these, if you've never worked with vacuum form canopies, they're just a big pain in the butt. Trying to get them to conform to often, you know, these resin kits where they're not real <laughs> accurate anyway. Um, so I've got a few gaps and rather than trying to file down and shave down some of the body or the fuselage or some more of the canopy where I could potentially wreck something and make it even worse. I've got some small little gaps, like right around here. I mean, it's just a little bit, but I need to close those up. So what I've done is I've went ahead and ran a bead of super extra thin CA right along the edges. So it's down here nice and sturdy. Um, but and like I talked about earlier, like I've been harping on, is that, you know, it's pretty brittle. If you if I flick it right now, it'll probably pop off. So what I'm going to do is fill it with, I've got some testers clear part cement. You could probably also use some micro crystal clear or some regular PVA glue. <clears throat> so I'm going to use this, and this is going to do two things. It's going to fill in those gaps, and it's going to... Uh, add some strength to the glue, the super glue, that I've got in here. So I'm just taking my glue looper and I'm just going to go along in here and fill in. That gap is pretty hideous, but we'll get it filled in. And you could say, well, you could come along with some putty or Mr. Surfacer, but that's going to show through. To the other side. So then I'll just take <clears throat> a q-tip, I'll wet it with some spit, and just wipe away the excess. Now that's going to dry and that's going to fill in that gap and basically create another clear section where that where that gap was. And I'm going to go around and probably do this around the whole thing to make sure I haven't missed any gaps. Get it in there nice and good. So it's basically just adding a clear extension with some adhesive properties. So this is, should be should be down nice and tight. Now when I glue regular styrene,
clear styrene canopies to a regular plastic kit, I use Tamiya Extra Thin and it creates a real strong bond. This is not going to be nearly that strong, so I do have to be careful. <clears throat> now I left it unmasked. I usually like to mask these before I, uh, I attach it to the plane. But I did that because these are real, um, and I'll show you, I've got the other spare one that I actually cracked. <laughs> Cracked it right up there, but trying to mask these while it's all floppy, it's it's kind of just it's a little too difficult. And there's my dog barking at the mailman. <clears throat> so I'll just mask it while it's on here. But I want to get this down nice and snug, so I'm just gonna run this bead of the clear glue right along here. And some of these I can't really see into the cracks and just wipe away the excess. Now I will probably have to come and after this dries and go over it again. And it's kind of like putty. You can keep adding until you adding in layers until you fill it up. Then I'll come along and I'll paint over it the inside color so none of my repairs show through. Then I can go in and add some putty if I do still need to, to putty it. I don't know if all that's making sense, but it makes sense to me. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna beat my dog to death. Heck. And I burn, I burn this stuff off with a lighter, just like I do the super glue. I got a pretty noticeable gap back here, which really isn't that big of a deal because this back portion of this canopy is going to be painted. But I also don't want anything to get down in there, in the inside of my canopy either. So I'm going to continue with this, and uh, once I get it all filled in, I'll come back and check to see if I need to do any more. I'll throw some paint on it, and then um, go from there. Uh, next step should be, uh, after I get the canopy mask off, we'll, uh, we'll get some primer on her. So I'll see you in a bit. All right, we've got it in primer. And I shot this last night, and then I came back and use some Mr. Servicer 500 to fill in a few little errors. Once I got it in primer, I can tell that the molding isn't quite as good as what I thought it was. The panel lines, and a lot of these I haven't even touched with a rescriber. But you can see here, a lot of them just don't look that good. And um, it's not my fault, it's the, it's the fault of the molding. I may come back with a scriber and try to clean those up a little bit. I think once I get paint on it, it's uh, it'll cover up some of these crimes. Overall, I mean, it's it's not perfect. Uh, it's it's not as as clean as what I would like to see, but it is what it is. The canopy, it looks okay. Definitely not as good as uh, most of my plastic kits, just because of the method and the materials and my skill level. But uh, I'm, I'm I'm happy with how it turned out. I think. Uh, it's as good as I could have hoped for with that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a little bit more research. I've got some paints mixed up, some RLM colors. And uh, I haven't really 100% decided on the paint scheme, but I got a good idea in my head. But uh, I'll do some more research, and we'll start painting it on the next episode. Thanks for watching, fellas.